let's get into what's real interesting in talking about. And so I'm going to give a nice preamble to this because I know a lot of people don't have an athletic subscription. But if you do, Mike Sando, who was formerly of ESPN, I think he actually covered the Niners for ESPN for a long time. If I remember when I was little, when I was maybe eight, nine, ten, the ESPN writer for the 49ers was Mike Sando. And basically what Mike Sando does after every draft is he pulls – he, I don't know how many executives, but he gets a poll of an anonymous comments from player personnel, guys, GMs, a bunch of higher level executives within the NFL, and they talk through each draft. And when it got to the 49ers draft, right, I, I thought there was one particular comment that was pretty interesting that I would love to talk about here. And that's from one random executive, one salty executive. And he said, San Francisco is one of those teams that does a great job of creating a narrative and they get cre- treated kindly. And exec said, other teams with better records over the past four years get crushed. Look at some of their early draft picks. What makes you think Trey Lance is the right pick if you follow their record of early picks? And now I think this guy's a little bit salty. I think he's a guy, he's an exec who's taken a lot of beatings from the media in the past, but I do think there's some truth to it. And I think there is some conversation. So Sam, you're the rookie here. I'm going to kick it off to you first. What are your thoughts about these comments? Do you think there's validity to them? What 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 do you think about them? I think the only point of validity there is that, um, like historically, uh, when trading up to get a quarterback from what twelve to three, it's not like, the best um, likelihood of like him being successful. But that's not you know it's not really a, a point to be taken in. Really, it depends on the situation. I think Trey Lance is going to the best situation there is out of all five quarterbacks. I don't think it's relatively close. Um, you know, you could argue the Jets are building something with, the, with Zach Wilson, but they're still building it. I think the Niners are ready to win right now. I think it's been that way, even with Garoppolo. And uh, even if Lance can't start day one, I mean, he's he's going to a great situation. He's going to succeed. I, uh, you know, it'll be a, it's going to be a tough, um, it's going to be a tough time or a tough. Oh my god, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> Jason? So, I mean, I think that you're right, right? There is a narrative mm-hmm. around Kyle Shanahan that he can do no wrong, right? They're, they're in many circles, he's regarded as, you know, a top three coach, you know, mind-wise as far as, like, play design, right? And I think that it, there is some validity to the idea that sometimes they do get away with some of those picks because they've hit on, you know, Fred Warner, George Kittle, all those other guys. And then Kyle makes up the rest with what he does with his mind. So while I don't agree fully with wh- whatever this executive said, there is some sort of validity to the idea that Kyle Shanahan can almost do no wrong right and that's why it, it's funny if, if, if another team and we talked about this when we were talking on the phone Vish, if another team did what the 49ers did and they drafted Trey Lance they probably get killed for the moves and I didn't want to take your point or anything like that I'll pass it to you right there oh, you know no. but but because Kyle Shanahan is quote-unquote getting his guy which you know that's what we all believe you know I think that it's it's viewed differently like you know like you said if Matt Nagy did that right like let's say Matt Nagy did it they would just be like crushing the Bears right now so I, I'm interested to get your thoughts on it because you kind of sparked my mind when we were talking about that as much as look listen you're not going to find a bigger Kyle Shanahan, you know, lover than than me, you know, but there is some validity to what was said about, you know, him being a little bit bulletproof, him being the golden child, almost not not um not feeling the pressure of it all because everybody always has the idea of look at the roster you took in, okay, but then these all the, all these draft picks that you missed on, right. all that stuff kind of all that context kind of gets lost in the shuffle just because everybody's in love with Kyle Shanahan, rightly so when it comes as a play designer, but I feel like he does he does get away from that criticism sometimes. He's yeah, definitely and- not perfect. Um, yeah. You know, he's made mistakes before, especially in the Super Bowl. Um, that's a good point where uh, he definitely could. Like, if the Jets drafted Trey Lance, a guy from the SCS, only played, what, 18 games, 19 games, something like that? 17. Um, 17, actually. So, I mean, he would have got killed by New York media. I mean, Zach Wilson alone gets killed by New York media for being from BYU, not having enough competition. And, uh, you know, NDSU is much – like, th- um, their, their competition is much worse than – you know, Alabama faces in the FBS, it's not even close. Um, I, I think if he went to a different uh, situation, he would have got killed for his uh, competition. The same thing Zach Wilson does, but even more. Yeah, and so I, I think all of those things are fair points. I do want to point out our guy, Splash Cousin here, 
We all know him. We love him. Jordan's the man. Tannehill stand number one right here. The only Tannehill that's a bigger Tannehill than me. But he said it was probably Ryan Pace. That was my first thought, too. too. I thought Ryan Pace would be the guy because this seemed like someone who's salty. And frankly, if you look at the way the Niners are covered, and I say this as a Niners fan, probably a true Stanahan like Jason, I'm a huge Kyle Shanahan fan, they are covered very favorably than what their record reflects. The Chicago Bears have made the playoffs twice out of the last four years. The 49ers have three losing seasons out of the last four years. Which team is looked at, Jason, where the coach, GM, everything they're looked at as the next big thing, and which team is looked at as where fire the coach, fire the GM, everybody's gone? Yeah, I mean, you can you can see that right off the bat. And and even with that that gaffe of, you know, the Solomon Thomas without without getting Mahomes and Watson, it still hasn't given them. So everybody just remembers Trubisky, but nobody remembers that or or, or they do. But it's never it's never right. held against to, against right. to and, the degree. R- right. And the Niners needed a quarterback in that draft, too. And whatever you want to say about Trubisky and I've taken my fair share of shots at Trubisky over the years. I mean, it's too easy for me. He's the Chicago Bears quarterback. I know a lot of Bears fans. And like calling Trubisky the next Blake Bortles was just my thing, even though Trubisky is better than Blake Bortles. But the point is that Solomon Thomas is not a better football player than Mitchell Trubisky. He is not. I I think that that needs to be stated. And for whatever reason, the Niners have avoided that uh, uh, criticism and the Bears haven't. But I think it all comes down to one thing and one thing. And I think Mike Sando answers it. His next line in this quote after this is that Kyle Shanahan's presence is what, and I think that's important. And I'm just going to go on a little side tangent. So I was watching a little bit of Niners 2017. Don't ask me why. I think I watched like four games. I was just watching the Niners 2017. And my big takeaway is that now when you look at 2014, uh, 2017, excuse me, uh, four years later, you know, now that, you know, you're removed from the emotions of Jimmy Garoppolo coming in, going five and oh, all of that. You know what I, you know what my biggest takeaway was? The way that team was coached in 2017, if Jimmy Garoppolo had started 16 games, the team would have gone nine and seven. And I didn't look at that actually as, wow, Jimmy Garoppolo played incredible. Looking back, it was just, wow, C.J. Beathard and Brian Hoyer, Kyle was already scheming it up so well in a lot of those games. That's why they were playing so tight with Indianapolis. That's why they played Seattle tough. That's why they played so many of those teams tough. It was just that... The quarterbacks just couldn't make like 50% of the plays because those two quarterbacks, unfortunately, are not NFL caliber starting quarterbacks. And I think all three of us agree Jimmy Garoppolo is a legitimate starting caliber NFL quarterback. And when you have that level of guy with this level of coaching, you can win a lot of games because the coaching is just so well done. And I think that really answers this question. That's the problem. Like when you look at Matt Nagy, you don't look at it as if he gets Justin Fields. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to change it. I think people are looking at it as whoever Kyle wants. If he likes him enough, he gets him. He can do all these things because there's so much already schemed up for the quarterback. And I think that's really where like I get why this exact I'm assuming it's Ryan Pace, but why this exact is salty. But if you don't have, unfortunately, there's only one of Kyle Shanahan and there's only like four or five guys who are on his level. And that's why people are so optimistic about the potential. Yeah, I mean, and then, you know, Kyle's never really been seen with his guy. That's the other thing that that people are, are you know, gravitating to, right? RG3 was forced on him. Kirk Cousins, he only coached for three year, uh, for three games. And and remember, Sean McVay is the one who really uh, developed Kirk more than anything, even if that's a, an offshoot of that offense. Sean McVay deserves a lot of that credit. You know, Kyle's never really had his guy. So now everybody's excited to see this play designer with someone that he desires, right? And and that's what I think more than anything everybody's gravitating to. It's like, hey, man, we already know this guy's been scheming it open for every single quarterback. Now, whether they make the plays is one thing or the other. But now if he sees and identifies someone and mo- and makes this drastic move from 12 to 3, then this has got to be great, right? So I think that's really what it is more than anything. Matt Nagy doesn't have that stigma around him. He doesn't have that narrative around him of being a play caller like that. So um, I think that's another thing too as well you know again i'm not trying to talk bad about coach i'm just trying to be objective right here down the middle and i think this is where he 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 skirts some of that that criticism because he's never had his guy and now this right. is his opportunity to, to on the other it. hand um now that he has his guy there's definitely pressure there for yep. Shannon to you know let's see what you got you know unlock the playbook let's see what what you can do yeah sure you know there's definitely pressure 100%. there so mm-hmm. and so it's this, not like this, you get, yeah 
He said and he has to prove himself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And this is that nuance mm-hmm. that goes beyond just you know wins and losses in a guy's record and all of that. Like, look at Adam Gase. Adam Gase with a terrible, terrible Jets roster two years mm-hmm. ago went seven yeah. and nine. Kyle only went six and ten last year with mm-hmm. an injured 49ers roster, but it had a top five defense. But that's where you it gets to. Do you watch them? What are you seeing when you watch them? How much is a coach impacting the game? And you mm-hmm. can see that Adam Gase offensively is not elevating his offense or his, pl- his the players, players yeah. are maximizing his players mm-hmm, as well right. as Kyle Shanahan clearly is. And I think that's, that's really important. And that's why people have this stigma. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on, and I yeah. think this is the guy that doesn't get enough credit. It's John Lynch's role. John Lynch is from the media, so Fox loves John Lynch, right? He worked at Fox, so Fox won't say anything bad about John Lynch. John Lynch is also probably the single most personable person, probably says the right thing more than anybody I've ever seen. He always is interesting. He's always kind. He's respectful. He always has the right things to say. And when you look at all of those things, I think it's really tough to say anything bad about John Lynch because he's been successful in every walk of life he's participated in, and he's just the ultimate guy. Yeah, one more thing I wanted to touch on with Nagy is is – I think I lost it actually. Damn it. All right. I'm sorry. My bad. Come back to me real quick. Guys, sure, I had sure, it for a Sam? second there. Yeah. You got anything no, to add? I know uh, we dug deep with a little bit of Adam Gase right there. <laughs> well, no. I mean, Adam Gase is just special, special, special coach to watch. Um, you know, everything he ran was just, just didn't go away. Oh. Uh, oh. Jason, no, no, no. I remember real quick. Uh, so when I was talking about <laughs> when when you were talking about Nagy elevating, right? If anything, he's been having to dumb his playbook down to people, like get it all the way down and strip it down. And I, maybe that that has to do more with personnel. But he's not elevating Mitchell Trubisky. He had to like you know push the offense towards him, give him all those easy throws, and basically force feed David Montgomery to take all that pressure off of him. So in in a way, yeah, it's almost the same thing. But I feel like with him, that play calling doesn't get looked at as elevating. It gets looked at as more like I'm just trying to survive you know right here with them whereas if it was kyle kyle might be able to elevate that with a little bit more of getting guys open there it so, is i'm sorry that's what i I'm i actually 100 agree with that point what matt Nagy did the last five games of last year is what he should have done with mitchell trubisky his entire career if mitchell trubisky had started off with kyle shanahan or sean mcveigh he would be looked at the same way jared goff is looked at If you put him in an offense that puts him under center, you go 21-22 personnel, you protect him with play action, you process the game for him, you give him half-field reads, ton of boots, all of those things, and utilize his athleticism, he would be looked at as that kind of player. Instead, he's looked at as a massive, massive bust because Matt Nagy tried putting him in the gun. They tried running RPOs. They tried running all these random trick plays. They basically tried being a a version of Kansas City's offense when that's not the style of quarterback they had. And I I respect Matt Nagy for making the adjustment and letting – uh, handing over the play calling duties and then them running that little bootleg version of Sean McVay's offense for the last five games of last year. But uh, I I do think that's the most important point that – Shit. When you look at the coach, you can't just look at the results. You also have to look at, are they maximizing their players? And it's the Adam Gase example. He went 7-9 and nine with the Jets two years ago, but he wasn't maximizing his players, even though there weren't a lot of good ones on that roster. And Shanahan always maximizes his players. And that's why thought, the Niners um, have a very positive stigma. To put um, Adam Gase and Matt Nagy in a similar place is that they both played too much trial and error with like, young quarterbacks. You really can't do that from a sch- uh, schematic point of view. You know, I thought they tried too many things, and the courts were put in too many bad situations, and it just ruins them. It gives them no rhythm, gives them no confidence, and confidence is such a big thing for quarterbacks, you know, always, and uh, it really killed their confidence. They really couldn't bounce back from that, especially Sam Darnold, if you watched him, uh, you know, his last couple games of the Jets. Yeah, Mm -hmm. 100% agree. And Jason, do you have anything before we move on? No, this is honestly a really, really good um, topic because, you know, like like I said, when we talked, this was going to be a good conversation because there is points that I agree with on this, even if I don't agree with the overall point. Like whoever this is and he's saying whatever he is about Kyle Shanahan, I can agree to a certain degree that he has skirted criticism. Um, but at the same time, there is that portion of, hey, he's never had his guy. So he's not only built up the stigma with the, being a play caller, now he's going to get his guy. So people are going to let him, you know, let him get a little bit more free reign. So that's where I disagree. Does definitely sound like whoever this executive is, he's very salty. He just doesn't like the fact that I'm being picked apart and Kyle Shanahan can't do any wrong. Well, design plays better, man. And, and you'll yeah, get that. Right. You know, that's the right. thing. 
And you get it too, right? You go down the list, like Dante Pettis was a high pick and, you know, Jalen Hurd hasn't really worked out and Kyle Shanahan's supposed to be the receiver guy and he's two for four on first three rounds receivers. So I do get it, but kind of to put a bow on this entire discussion, I, I think the big, the big thing is, yeah, you're right. Like, I think there is some validity to this comment that the Niners do maybe get a fair shake from the media, but it, it's, it's, it's just not to be cliche, but life just isn't fair. Sorry. More talented people are going to get more opportunities and uh, they're just going to be uh, given more rope to succeed because of their talent. And Kyle Shanahan is the most talented at uh, coaching and offensive play calling possibly in the entire NFL. And so um, I think that that's why he's always going to get that longer rope than somebody like Nagy where you don't see the special, special traits. One more thing, too. Also, on top of all that, Kyle Shanahan has context to each season to why things went wrong. Took over right. a terrible roster in 2017. You know, Jimmy, you know, electrifies a little bit. 2018, he gets hurt. Okay, that season's wiped out. 2019, they made the Super Bowl. Okay, you'll be back. 2020, okay, the entire team's decimated. So each year, you can get context to why the 49ers were bad. It's not necessarily that they were just bad. Like, all you know, every single year, there's an, a new reason. Or there's more context to the discussion about why they were what, what either they're bad or why they were good so sam i know i know we've kind of kept you out so i'm Sorry. gonna change the topic real quick but before yeah. we go jason i will say this uh, and i'll say this only to maintain objectivity we follow the niners closely so we know all the reasons to that i feel like every bad team in nfl history we can point out like if i really wanted to i feel like i could make 15 excuses for adam gase because I thought Mike McCagnan was one of the worst GMs in the history of football with the guys he's he pretty picked. bad. So yeah. uh, I, I think that as bad as Gase was, I could still make that argument. But yes, yeah. I do think that is a fair point. Well, I think he can make excuses for everyone. Those. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I think he can make excuses for everyone. But at the same time, you got to hold everyone accountable. Because at right. the end of the day, I mean, you know, Gase was still a very important part of that team. I mean, there's no there's no more important position or part of football, a football team than the head coach. Right. I mean, he has his own staff. I mean – I mean, for Gase, you can argue that he didn't build a good enough staff around his players, but, you know, that's a problem with a lot of coaches out there who didn't succeed. 